All right, so uh, we are leave. Uh, let's start. Uh, hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our today's session focused on prime brokerage services uh, in the digital asset space uh, and our like, recently launched product, uh, which we call Finally Markets Liquidity Match. Uh, so we gathered uh, some of the brightest minds in the industry to share their expertise and insights and let me introduce uh, our speakers today. So Leo Khmelnytsky, a colleague of mine who is heading strategic partnerships at Finance Markets. Uh, Peter Iriades, Global Head of Distribution at Floating Point Group. We have Michael Rapkin, Global Head of Business Development at DiviChain. And Boris Sibosik, which is who is the Head of OTC uh, at, uh, at Vincent. So we expect uh, to have like at around one hour session uh, today. Uh, we'd be happy to allocate part of it to a question. So feel free to send us questions via like chat and our moderator will be able just to send it to us. If uh, we'll not have time for that during the session, uh, we'll be like able to get back to you uh, after we uh, finish our, our, our live stream. So let's start. And uh, I have a first question. Uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Sergei Knikov. I'm Managing Director in Final Markets and I'm honored to be a moderator of the today's session. So first question, first question is to you. First question is um, for Leo. Um, Leo, tell us what actually inspired the creation of uh, FM liquidity match. And if you could walk us through the like, process of how the idea um, of this product came about, it would be just great. Uh, sure. Thank you, Sergey. And uh, thank you to our distinguished partners and uh, participants. Um, I have a pleasure of, uh, and a privilege to work as, uh, in global partnerships and uh, work with Michael, Boris, and Peter um, on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. So you know, thank you guys for being on this live stream. Um, perhaps before we dive into the Finder Markets product, uh, it might be helpful to cover a few points on market structure. Um, I joined Goldman Sachs in 1998, and when I transferred to equity derivatives, Part of my responsibilities was to do uh, trading research and develop TCA trading cost analysis models. Uh, we studied market structure, looked at spreads, uh, speed of execution, imbalanced data, and so forth. And we also monitored market share of NYSE and NASDAQ, the two largest uh, primary exchanges uh, in US markets. And what seemed natural to us was that NYSE traded 85 to 90% of its listed stock at the time. Now, fast forward 10 years, we go through decimalization, regulation, NMS, uh, the emergence of alternative trading systems and ECNs, and the explosion of upstairs trading, large blocks printed by broker dealers, and later with the emergence of trading technology, the internalization, when brokers were able to cross buyers and sellers without sending orders to the exchange. The results of these market structure changes, guess what? NICE market share dropped to 15 to 20%. We believe the similar changes are underway in the digital space. We started with large uh, centralized exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, Bitstamp, which gave solid growth and wide adoption to crypto trading. However, centralized exchanges do have issues. There's a conflict of interest. There's a pre-funding requirement, just to name the few. And the pain points only got worse after the collapse of FTX. All of a sudden, the industry realized that we need to price counterparty risk. Mike Higgins actually mentioned that in his interview with uh, CBO Digital uh, last week. Uh, many market participants lost significant assets, and it made asset owners reassess counterparty risk of centralized exchanges. It highlighted a strong need for unbundling of services and moving towards non custodial OTS trading solutions. So here comes Finder Markets. Finder Markets is an institutional multi dealer, non custodial trading platform uh, focused on best execution for digital assets. In order to address the pain points we mentioned earlier, we created a new product. So that's how the idea was born and that's how idea developed. So the liquidity match is really a technology solution which allows prime brokers and in fact, any financial institution to create their own proprietary ECN for their clients. We focus on the higher quality execution, tighter spreads, minimal market impact and making the most efficient use of capital for our clients. Right, right. But uh, can you explain like, in simple terms, how does it work exactly? Well, the platform is designed for prime brokers, liquidity providers, and liquidity takers. 
and it offers, number one, a non-custodial capital efficient solution. We don't provide custody, we connect to various custodians, we're custody agnostic. Secondly, uh, we offer firm liquidity with no second look and zero rejection, uh, rejection rates. Unlike routing orders to RFU providers or RFS providers, um, we have firm liquidity on the platform. We have a state-of-the-art risk management tools. Gives you ability to manage risk using wallet balances, using automated uh, checks and balances. And it's really the core of the platform. We have the overnight borrowing and lending capabilities uh, where people can, the participants can keep the positions on the book overnight and then have certain charges and uh, collect interest on the short and long positions. Uh, we have automated onboarding and there's so much more, I don't wanna go uh, into detailed list, but that's kind of core of the platform. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Let's uh, move forward to Peter and ask like uh, uh, client standpoint, because Peter FPG was like a first, uh, first user of finally markets liquidity match and like, to expand uh, its product offering and start providing like OTC prime brokerage services. Uh, but can you elaborate a little bit on like what problems uh, does uh, liquidity match actually solve for your operations and for your business? Excellent. Yes. First of all, Sergey, thanks for hosting hosting us here and uh, appreciate all the other partners here as well too. Boris, Michael, thank you for joining. Uh, Leo, yeah, you and I go way back as well too um, in 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 the industry. So it's great to see a familiar face and work with such a professional like yourself. Um, but Sergey, to your question, you know, what does what does FMLM uh, really solve for our our operations and our our clients? Well, we speak to our clients often, and we hear about their frustrations when they're trying to access unique liquidity that's not only efficient but it's actionable and it's also dependable. Uh, Finery Markets Liquidity Match, the, the whole platform solves for this, and it gives us an out-of-the-box solution for trading, and as Leo mentioned, risk management across OTC liquidity, what makes it much faster for us to get to market with off-exchange off liquidity, and that was super, super important to us and our clients post-FTX. As you may know, OTC markets and their expertise that, that come from, uh, obviously, from Michael and Boris's teams they're extremely important. They're critical for our clients as well, too. Yet at times it can be frustrating because of the need for point-to-point -point bilateral agreements that need to be set up. And those contract negotiations can, can sometimes be difficult and take some time for clients to, to um, build a network that's efficient. Um, this is another reason why we think that Finery Markets Liquidity Match is so efficient because clients immediately benefit from Liquidity Match and only need to onboard with a floating point group entity, right? You just have one entry point where you're going to paper with us at FPG, and then you'll be able to get the unique liquidity offering that we get from DV Chain and Wincent. Uh, and then you'll also be able to access the Finery Markets trading GUI, which is excellent, very intuitive, extraordinarily robust, clean and concise. And I've had 20 years of experience at looking at EMSs and OMSs. It's state of the art. So. Finally, you know, liquidity match is a really, it's a game changer. Um, it provides our, our clients real time, two-sided consolidated market access using the firm quotes that don't fade. And that's exactly the predictable liquidity that our clients are asking for, especially in fast markets. Yeah, yeah, it takes place. But maybe just a little bit uh, to dive deeper in the details. What I, we know that uh, like there were some attempts to run prime brokerage services based on the liquidity of centralized exchange and some like some players announced that. Uh, and probably you have like a choice between different solutions. What was your like internal um, decision making process? What was the rationale behind this choice? Yeah, you're right. There are many choices out there. Uh, but finery markets liquidity match is uniquely geared for the sell side. That's a big differentiator. Um, you're thinking about the global business with hundreds of different counterparties and you, things like sub accounts and the ability to set execution limits on a per counterparty basis and a per sub account basis were huge for us. Most of the other solutions in a similar cut category are only built with the intention of servicing buy side clients. So their focus is totally different than what you guys are, are were able to offer us. 
So that was the major, well, it was one of the major consideration points. But you also need to consider the team. I think this does go back to to relationships in the past, like I just mentioned. But you know, finery markets are, are the best, right? You, you guys are experienced global players across traditional finance, as Leo had mentioned earlier. Uh, investment advisors and proven engineer technologists right across the globe. Um, you've got an immutable tack, track record, and we immediately gravitated to this professionalism and this hardworking ethos. It's very similar to what we also do. But that's that's just sort of you know the the pedigree. But when you get into you know really what makes uh, the choice work, it's about having a good product. And from my years of experience in equity markets, the one thing's for sure is whenever you reduce inefficiencies, and you bring fragmented markets together by aggregating unique liquidity sources, well, then you're on to something really good. You're on to a winning solution. And that's exactly what what, uh, what Finery Markets and Liquidity Match has done with partners like Wincent and, D and DV Chain involved. So I'm used to Reg MS. I'm used to regulations making it, um, making it a law effectively to be able to communicate all of these these different um, bids and quotes across different consolidated public markets, and crypto doesn't have that yet. So when Finery, when Finery came up with the coordination uh, of this product, it was a, it was a no brainer for us. We really felt encouraged to uh, to join in uh, to use the product as a partnership. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It's definitely like a pleasure to hear like warm warm words uh, from you guys on the solutions. But uh, let's like make, maybe uh, uh, make a step aside, and um, I would like to ask uh, Michael uh, uh, to get back to like broader picture. So you like provide uh, cryptocurrency solutions uh, globally in DV chain, and uh, Peter mentioned that market structure is just evolving. Leo started with that. How do you see how do you see um, evolution of market structure in crypto trading? going forward it would be uh, great to hear your thoughts on that yeah for sure sergey and uh thank you for hosting this today um and thank you for to finery and uh the uh, fpg team for putting this all together in collaboration so to answer your question there sergey um i think you know one of the first points would be increased institutional adopt participation so you know over the past few years we've seen a growing interest from institutions coming into crypto and you know, this trend is likely to continue. So leading to, you know, increased participation from traditional financial institutions like banks, asset managers, and hedge funds. Um, I think also how we, you know, how the market landscape progresses is obviously with regulatory developments. So you have governments and regulatory bodies <clears throat> currently around the world that are working through clear regulations for cryptocurrencies. In some jurisdictions, it might not be as clear as others, but it, it, there is at least um, a solution that's trying to be built out um, depending on the jurisdiction. And that really helps you know, reduce uncertainty and encourage wider adoption for institutional investors and you know, the general public overall. Um, and then I think you know, improved market infrastructure, right? Which is why we're, we're having this call and why this product was created as well. So currently like the infrastructure supporting crypto markets is still evolving. Um, I think we can see, we can expect to see advancements, you know, in areas such as scalability, security, transaction speed. Um, but these these improvements may attract, you know, more participants and, and essentially increase market efficiency. Right? Um, yeah, that, that's. I, I think those are the points that I kind of wanted to address there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, uh, Boris. Uh, it, it would be interesting to like hear your view as a global algorithmic market maker um, uh, working across different markets, uh, I suppose you should be like quite demanding uh, for technology stack, for technology stack. Uh, proof sync execution quality among all this, uh, all, all the rest of the like uh, uh, elements of the uh, uh, trade cycle. So can you tell us how important is technology for the success of prime brokerage solution? Sure. Um, and first of all, thank you for, for, for having us. And um, thank you for FPG and our friends at DV Chain for, uh, for partnering up on, on, this, um, on this episode of the Partner Markets um, webinar. Look, our, our tech stack is absolutely critical in keeping us ahead of the game in this um, competitive industry. 
is really at the heart of, of what we do at, at Vincent. Um, the markets are always on the move, and that means that we need technology that's solid and, and able to scale up when we when we need it to. Um, you know, that means that we are, we are de dealing with uh, high volumes of transactions, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands a day, um, which are happening at, at really a rapid pace. Um, and, you know, so we're, we're investing in, in the latest technology, the best infrastructure. We're talking advanced algorithms, private networks to lower infrastructure latency, co-location, um, you know, top-notch security measures. Um, all of this, you know, to to um, to ensure the transactions are smooth and efficient and and secure above all. Um, but it's um, not just about the execution of the of the trades. We use the the um, the, the the core uh, stack to glean important insights from um, from the vast amounts of data that we collect, and and those insights guide our um, decision making progress, and they help us manage risk and optimize our strategies. Um, and all of this means that we are able to offer the best service to our clients um, at FPG and keep our edge over the competition and uh, our friends at DV Chain on their toes. Um, you know, so um, building this 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 stack and assembling the team behind it, well, that that was, as you can imagine, a huge undertaking. Uh, but it pays off because it it delivers outstanding results. Um, now, if I if I to your question, if a prime brokerage wants to compete on a global level. Then I would argue that the, they need to meet the same technical requirements, um, and I think that's where where FM liquidity match uh, comes in uh, quite nicely, because basically prime brokers can take advantage of what we've been building over the past six years and offer their clients a robust solution based on the liquidity from from the established you know tech leaders like Vincent and our friends at DB Chain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Ed. and maybe just. Get back to the point that we have like a different type of prime broker solutions based on the uh, centralized exchanges liquidity and based on the uh, OTC liquidity. I mean, technology-wise, do you think any difference uh, in requirements and in the way how you like approach uh, to this uh, um, uh, to different types of liquidity provision and liquidity sourcing? Sure, sure. You know, our broad network um, is a is a critical aspect of our value proposition. Um, it allows us to amass a really significant amount of liquidity, which in turn enables us to um, handle large trades without causing substantial market disruption or price slippage. Um, and this is an advantage for, for prime brokers, you know, dealing with especially institutional cl clients who require efficient execution for, for larger trade volumes. Um, we also recognize the importance of discretion in the business. Um, our clients' trading activities are on, you know, publicly broadcast that they are on, um, as they are on centralized exchanges, uh, which adds a, a little extra layer of privacy. Um, and one of the crucial aspects, really, of our operations is our, is our adaptability with respect to settlement periods. Um, the the flexibility is significant um, for for uh, for clients like like FPG because. Um, if they have particular operational needs or trading strategies that necessitate um, unique settlement cycles, we can we can adopt that. Um, plus, we are you know grateful for the reduced administrative strain that prime brokers handle for us. Um, when we when we talk about off exchange liquidity, um, we're also looking at mitigating the risk associated with centralized exchanges. Um, as as you uh, pointed out at the at the beginning of our talk. You know these these risks that they range from cybersecurity threats to just let's let's be honest, straight up fraud, right? And since we operate on a post trade and trade settlement basis, clients' funds are simply not exposed to to that sort of risk with uh, with us. Um, for for smaller clients, maybe not that significant, but for for institutions, definitely, um, we do require um, a stringent, uh, you know, KYC and AML standards. So, the the commitments uh, aligns us with high compliance requirements of prime brokers and their institutional clients. Um, one one thing that I, you know, on, on, a, on a final note, we we really believe in providing a personalized, high touch service to our partners. So, as opposed to centralized exchanges, we really have direct um, access. To, to our partners uh, with, in, in prime brokers, and they have access to our trading desk for efficient price discovery and negotiation and trade ex execution on larger trades. So um, we believe that you know, our goal as, a, as, a, as an LP is to empower prime brokers to deliver 
top tier trading experience to their clients. And uh, they can do that by leveraging our technical and trading expertise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for this. Uh, Michael, uh, more or less the same question to you as uh, to liquidity provider. Do you see like, like sex uh, prime brokers, sex based prime brokers, and OTC prime brokers as a, like a complementary or competing products? And in general, would you agree with the Boris points or anything to add to that? Yeah, I think Boris uh, did a good job covering most of the points here, so don't want to be repetitive for our audience here. But, um, it, you know, for the most part, it, everything that Boris said is correct, um, starting from enhanced liquidity, um, depending on, you know, how, how any of our clients plan to execute, how any of your users plan to execute, um, that could be a huge advantage, right? We're talking about minimal slippage, reduced market impact on price. Um, and I think one of the most important points, you know, that goes across the board for, uh, you know, uh, us and Winston is flexibility in trade settlement, right? Um, we have, we operate on a post-trade settlement basis, right? So for, for us, um, we take that risk off the client of being able to, you know, get their, you know, funds taken off of an exchange, which we've seen a lot of over the last, you know, couple of years, obviously a lot more prevalent a few years ago, but if I asked most people in the room here, if you thought FTX was going to collapse, most people would probably say no, right? Writing was on the wall, but we didn't want to see it. So it, from that perspective, it's, I, I think there's a huge advantage here for institutions to build trust and to work with OTC desks over sexes and to kind of bridge that back into traditional finance because a lot of those institutions are a little bit fearful right now. Um, and the last point is, you know, I'm sure anybody listening on this call has tried to get in touch with an exchange if they had a withdrawal issue, if they had a deposit issue, and good luck, you know, good luck talking to somebody there, You probably 24 to 48 hours. You know, you ping a company like Vincent or DV Chain, well, you know, you have live personalized, you know, service in chats that are able to help assist with you right away and leaning on, you know, FPG and finery markets. Um, that just brings, you know, the, everything together in a very trustful um, product. That's why we'll love to have you as partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, back to Peter. Peter, I mean, having top-notch LPs, as we just heard, is like a wild card for bad execution uh, to the clients. But this is like just a, like one element of the prime brokerage puzzle, uh, taking into account this like pre-trade elements, post-trade elements. Uh, risk management is uh, something which, uh, I mean, given all the events we mentioned today uh, in the crypto markets is uh, really important. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit how, I mean, risk management works in uh, your prime broker stuff? Sure. You know, I will first of all say that, you know, the, 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 the proverbial, uh, the, the chain is, is only as strong as its weakest link. And just what Michael said, I'll, I'll reiterate it in coordination with Boris that, that transparency uh, isn't really a strength in the crypto markets, as we all have learned, and unfortunately, some have have learned super hard in 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 the context of of fraud or defaults, etc. Um, I think you know, in in the twenty plus years uh, of experience I've had in the traditional finance world, regulations and other oversight has pushed that transparency um, really um, incredibly efficiently, um, but it's also it's also muted some innovation because of that, right? There are huge hurdles to enter some of those businesses. Um, and, and this is where we as, as professional providers can all collaborate together and work transparently and be best in class. So we're really super excited to be part of this, this consortium. But when it comes down to other risks, Sergey, you're absolutely right. Th this, this is a unique opportunity with, within Finery Marcus to provide us a lot of flexibility to manage our risk. Um, that risk is going to be shared across our, our, our OTC counterparties, as Michael pointed out earlier, um, whether that's settlement risk or, or, or just communications and time to market, right? Fast markets are very challenging for, for everyone to, um, to properly forecast and then also execute effectively. But we'll be able to do things like pre-trade checks on client positions and the ability to limit exposure by counterparty and by customer and specific digital asset. That's a huge benefit for us. It's a game changer. We'll also be able to leverage the actual position data. So getting back to real-time position data from Finery to intelligently proactive and proactively manage our risk real-time rather than to having to, to do it as like a response 
to an event that already happened. So that real-time um, position management is huge for us. And I think with lessons that this industry has learned over the past year, we can all agree on some simple core tenets that risk management is all um, really has to be driven by real-time data. You know, you can't go and and just have a a trust or a relationship or a handshake that says, don't worry, it's worked in the past, it'll work in the future. So I, I really feel that those are core tenants that are going to help us become much more uh, adept and flexible in managing our own risk with our partners. Yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe the another, I mean, thing to look at is just the capital efficiency. Yeah. So from a distant, distant point, uh, I mean, I'm going uh, to provide like kind of financial services uh, to client to help them to like, increase the efficiency of their capital usage? Uh, thanks for your question. Both Boris and, and Boris and Michael also spoke about this a little bit. Uh, one of the major benefits of this structure is that we'll, we'll be able to extend credit to our clients with the help of liquidity providers, DB Chain and Wincent. Um, and that's obviously going to be through the, the finery markets, the liquidity match platform. And this allows our clients total flexibility when choosing settlement and custody options. We spoke a little bit about it a little earlier, but they can fit their own their individual needs and it's a very important component to our clients right managing that that timing risk uh, overnight lending um, it's also going to be self-directed so this added flexibility within the infrastructure um, to self-initiate core functions like the actual trading and the settlement um, is going to be seamless um, for the from their experience and it will allow us to seamlessly transfer assets with our trusted counterparties um, from our off exchange hot wallets, uh, ultimately in coordination with um, with DB Chain and Wincent and having that, that cooperation across the communication and transparency. And that's massively important for us, right? The integrity of the system, the integrity of our partnerships um, is absolutely gonna make a difference with regards to um, what our, our competitors are offering at the moment. Yeah, yeah. thanks, uh, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. uh maybe back to now uh anything to add to peter's point with regards to the how the whole trading process works starting from pre-trade to execution to post-trade uh anything you would highlight yeah i think peter really focused on the most important part of finery markets uh, liquidity match features um we believe that both centralized decentralized and uh, otc liquidity providers are here to stay uh, liquidity role Sorry, liquidity will remain fragmented um, and the counterparty risks are not going away, just like it is in the traditional markets, similarly in crypto. Um, the finer markets uh, started as a traditional ECN four years ago, and the liquidity match is really the evolution of that uh, product that gives the position management that Peter just mentioned, gives access to a very robust um, technology stack uh, that Boris was talking about earlier. Um, we have the pre-trade and the intra-trade uh, checks, compliance checks, uh, position checks, uh, and that really gives a lot of uh, solidity to managing the counterparty risk, which I think is gonna be uh, an important aspect. Um, uh, we talked about the firm liquidity, and um, again, I want to thank you know Michael and uh, Boris uh, because they are the partners who are bringing the liquidity to the platform, um, and they allow for that no look, zero rejection rate executions. Um, that we don't have the pre-trade. Um, slippage because nobody knows that you're actually executing you're not sending rfqs or rfs's to other brokers to other platforms you're not as a client um, you as a taker of liquidity you're not sending out these requests and you're broadcasting to the entire world that you are about to trade um, you are standing in the platform you are looking at the prices and you're executing uh, based on the firm liquidity and then the solution that we provide uh, essentially ecn as a service um, it allows uh, for strong partners to really uh, develop their customized proprietary depth of book for their clients. And that's what we're partnering with Peter, with Floating Point Group, to allow their clients to actually see liquidity that they're looking for in the particular coins. We have over 200 coins uh, quoted on the platform um, and gives them the flexibility of settlement, as Peter just mentioned, um, and gives uh, real value to uh, being able to interact with the liquidity. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, actually, I have a couple of like more uh, general questions just to hear uh, uh, thoughts of all of you uh, with regards to the market development. And uh, I mean, we see how the 
regulators globally approach to crypto and uh, their approach is like different. How do you see regulatory environment is going to uh, evolve? So we touched a little bit uh, upon that uh, with Michael. Michael, maybe you just uh, proceed with that and give us more details on how do you see uh, regulation uh, going forward? I'm going to do this at a very high level and not get too specific on regulators, except I think it's, you know, maybe there's some on the call. Um, so I, I it's it's going to be, I think, a little bit of a challenge um, with regards to regulations. I think we're going to see some, you know, we're going to see a prevalence of offshore primes um, until there's a bit more clarity. And again, that depends on what jurisdiction you're in. Um, overall, though, um, it, let's maybe pivot from the regulation. And I wanted to add that in general, like, you know, we think the prime brokerage business in crypto is definitely going to go and help facilitate adoption, right? Um, for us, a product like FM Liquidity Match, um, you know, with Finery and FPG behind it, it will play a vital role in addressing some of the challenges and requirements that we talked about on the call. Um, it, from a regulatory perspective, again, I think you'll see a rise of, you know, of some offshore PVs um, just until there is regulatory clarity. Um, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think regulation maybe like will define the way how competition is evolved. Yeah, any thoughts on the competitive landscape going forward? Um, I think with the competitive landscape going forward, we probably will see some traditional PBs enter the space, um, at least in escrow or tri-party roles, um, because that. I, and I don't think that'll be the uh, huge co competitive disadvantage. I actually think it'll be advantage because it'll help build trust in the overall community. Um, it could be tied to, you know, back to regulated stuff, it could be tied to a specific subset of regulated venues. Um, but I think from that perspective, you know, we're already seeing the rise of PBs in crypto um, with n n very unique, no products like FM liquidity match yet. But you, I think there will be more competition as institutional counterparties want to come in and want that trust factor. In addition, um, you know, PBs will like, they'll provide lending and better capital efficiency across venues, which we touched upon, right? So just, you know, something that Boris touched high level on was instead of for any market maker, any anybody who's trading, instead of posting, you know, 100% of collateral to third party lender, then taking your borrowed funds to three exchanges, three venues, whatever, you now have an all in one venue, like FM liquidity match, right? So some, some will, you know, some, PBs will have different features, but I think from a perspective for traders, market makers, liquidity providers in general, um, I think it's a great solution. I know I've kind of come off your question a little bit, Sergey, but that was me just trying to divert from regulation. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe, uh, you know, Sergey, if, if you let me, uh, and sure. with Michael's permission, I think going back to market structure, we believe that the continued lack of uh, regulation of digital assets in the US erodes a trust, uh, Michael, just like you said, and it pushes firms to the business abroad. And uh, honestly, we applaud the efforts of Dante, uh, head of global policy at Circle, and many others who are representing the industry on the Hill and continues to um, battle through to get the regulation. You know, SEC is really a punishing body at this point, instead of setting the regulation, setting the rules and making it clear um, and allowing people to really embrace the uh, crypto trading. So we're really hoping for that. Um, I know, Michael, you can't say that, but I can. You know, we, we're really hoping that the regulation is going to provide the clarity that we need uh, to grow the business in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clarity is, I mean, crucial component for trust, and the trust is something which is, I mean, uh, financial system is based on trust, so that's really important. And Leo, maybe if you started with regulation, but please proceed with the competitive landscape. It would be great to hear your thoughts on that. Um, well, I'll be biased, naturally. Uh, I think finding markets and the solution that we've built is unique. Again, as I mentioned, you know, we started the ECN uh, as an ECN four years ago. Um, there are no other competitors right now who provide the firm liquidity. There are a number of uh, sort of projects maybe in the making, and they have been for a couple of years, uh, but liquidity that we provide on finding market platform with the risk management and the position management that Peter talked about earlier is unique. Um, liquidity match is really the solution that provides less risk, uh, deeper liquidity and tighter prices. And you know, we believe that it offers superior value to prime brokers, to liquidity providers, 
um, like Boris and Michael and to liquidity takers, you know, asset managers, banks, uh, payment providers, and so forth. Um, we believe that this is the next step in the evolution of the capital markets as a whole. And uh, we really think that this is the future of electronic crypto trading. So yeah. come join us at yeah. Finding Markets. Thanks. I mean, the same question uh, to Boris. Boris, please, uh, what's, what's your view on the um, development of the regulation and competitive landscape? Yeah, I think Michael covered the, the points really, really nicely. I mean, um, we, we are seeing uh, science institutional uh, interest is picking up, uh, which, you know, that will, that will likely draw new entrants into the market, into the BB space, which will increase competition, which will uh, mean that the existing PBs will need to differentiate their offering, uh, you know, whether through superior execution or new product offerings or in enhanced security or um, simply through improved client, client service. Um, what I also think is, as uh, we'll see, is likely the, the integration of more traditional finance tools and practices into the, the crypto space. You know, th this could include um, complex derivatives, um, multi-leg trades, risk management tools, um, which which finance markets has already covered in a, in a great way, and um, mainly increased automation in trades ex execution and settlement. You know, a lot of the settlement is still semi-manual and with the unstable banking rails that we are seeing, um, we as an industry still have a long way to go for true best execution. Um, in terms of regulation, as it was pointed out uh, by both Leo and Michael, I think it's it's quite clear that, that the crypto market is moving towards increased oversight globally, which will push um, the, the players into offshore uh, jurisdictions. Um, it's currently I, I don't, it's it's unclear whether more regulation will bring more le legitimacy to the industry, or if it will slowly choke choke it to death. Right? We we can we can end up there as well, um, and I think it will be key for the regulators to really strike a balance between protecting cons customers and preventing illicit activity um, on one side and nurturing innovation on the other side. Um, I, however, remain positive. You know, crypto will find a way. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. I'm sure, uh, Peter, you are on my side with Boris on the like positive scenario, being the pioneer of the WTC Prime Brokerage Service. But from your angle, uh, how do you see competition and uh, and the regulation? Yeah, well, I, I regulation is very difficult to to forecast. Um, but I think I I agree with everything that Boris and Michael said, as well as Leo. Um, you know, we're we're getting more. Ver verification and validation from the institutional adoption um, perspective that that crypto is becoming much more of a viable and interesting uh, asset class and technology um, lifestyle effectively that they just need to really understand the rules before they can enter. Uh, I think last year was very interesting to hear some of these larger institutions say that they didn't really quite understand maybe parts of the technology or the value uh, uh, you know add that was provided by the innovation but now that's that's old news uh, everyone has really done their homework they're ready to go and they just need to know how to actually you know operate in a rule set that hasn't been defined by the regulators um i used to live in that world where there, the rule set as i alluded to earlier was overly prescriptive um yeah, but right now you know there's a balance and you can't just live in a enforcement um you know environment where everybody is afraid to either innovate or to um to try to do something that's that's uh that's that hasn't been done yet and then in the fear of getting um you know getting some type of uh sanction against you um what we're doing at at floating point group is just really listening uh listening to clients talking to our competitors and other uh, um, um, regulators just to find out exactly the pulse as this definition gets established and um and, and really making sure that what we're doing is um is is in in line with some of the traditional finance um clues I guess uh, that have already been let, laid down with regards to uh, best execution as Boris said transparency um, professionalism, um, immediacy. We we track KPIs actually that we're quite proud of on our response time to clients, uh, making sure that we're that we're establishing this consistency of culture within Floating Point Group that is very akin to traditional finance. 
so that when that world sort of comes together, uh, whether it's a traditional hedge fund or it's, it's a bank, broker, dealer, et cetera, that we can apply that same experience across the crypto world globally. So really, uh, really gearing up and just getting ready for that, uh, that, that shot heard around the world. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Peter. So we are leave uh, for more than 40 minutes already. And I have a like, final question and start to wrap it up. And my final question to Leo. Uh, Leo, actually, if you have any advice uh, for institutions looking to enter uh, the crypto prime brokerage uh, space, uh, what advice would it be? Um, that's, uh, that's a good question, uh, Sergey. Um, I think going back to the very beginning of our talk, uh, the market structure evolution in crypto space is, I would call, on steroids. I think the ODC liquidity will continue to grow and we will continue to provide the tightest possible markets to our clients. Um, for the development of a prime brokers, I think this is a winning uh, solution. Um, you are able to manage your client needs, just like what Peter said. I think this is the foremost um, topic of conversation for us at Finder Markets and with our partners. Uh, we're providing the deep liquidity, we're providing the risk management. I think we're gonna start pricing uh, the counterparty risk a lot more carefully um, after the FTX and uh, with the hopefully upcoming regulations, uh, this will be a, a really important point. Um, and um, I think working with several custodians to offer single and multi-leg settlement automation is also a very important point. Uh, Michael alluded to that earlier, um, being able to provide the seamless settlement process and being able to consume liquidity and settle it in a timely uh, and professional manner is very important. So we're gonna to continue to build uh, features. We're gonna to continue to add to liquidity match um, and hopefully we'll satisfy the needs for both large institutional clients on the asset management side, as well as all the other market participants um, in the crypto industry. All right, right. Thanks, uh, thanks, Neil. Uh, uh, let me check uh, with Matthias if you have any questions uh, coming from our uh, LinkedIn uh, live stream. Yep, we have uh, further questions. Uh, so let's start uh, to wrap up. Uh, and I would like to like say thank you uh, for for your valuable contributions for our today's discussion. For today's discussion, uh, I mean, if anyone has uh, further questions or wish to explore uh, FM liquidity match further, feel free to contact us on like LinkedIn, website, email. I mean, whatever is better. Uh, once again. Thanks for your participation and uh, look forward to see you in our next uh, sessions. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sergey. Thank you, gentlemen. It was a pleasure.